Welcome back. I'm Tedward and welcome to my 2022 Honda Civic Si on a very rainy day here in New England. And we need it because we've pretty much been in drought conditions all summer. And now that it's after Labor Day, I guess we're getting that fall weather. But first, I want to thank Ridge Wallets for sponsoring today's video. Now, I thought I had a streamlined, slim wallet for the past few years, but the Ridge Wallet takes it to the next level of slim. And it holds 12 cards plus cash. This sturdy design comes with a lifetime warranty and it's available in over 30 colors. I also picked up one of their key cases because I swap cars a lot and I always forget which keychain my house key is on. So now I have all of my important keys on one key case. And to sweeten the deal, it gets even better. Now, with every dollar spent on the website before September 30th, you'll be entered to win this insane Ford Bronco or 75 grand if you'd rather have cash. Use the link in the description for a discount and step up your wallet game. So, let's start it up and see how she handles in the wet. This car is actually really great to drive in these kind of conditions just because there's tons of visibility. Um, compared to the Acura Integra, which is a luxury SI essentially. Um, this does not have automatic rain sensing wipers, so you are forced to uh, figure it out yourself. But what I like about this car is the stock is really clear that the big block down here, more means more rain, so less time between wiping. I think in other cars, sometimes it's like more time between wipes, which is obviously something you figure out along the way when you're driving these cars. But I do like a little bit of animated explanation to these things, so that's very helpful. Um, but you know, without rain sensing wipers, you know, you are going to be the one doing that. However, the car does have automatic headlights, which I love because so many people do not put their headlights headlights on in inclement weather and it's really difficult especially on a day like this when people are driving by you're going to have a lot of mist and in, in, in moisture kicked up just by the nature of the car driving by you can't see things so you've got to have that in the daytime running lights in a lot of cars do not put the tail lights on so I'm thankful that this car pretty much always in auto and if you wanted to turn them off you've really got to dig for it you've got to do this sort of like thing here but uh, yeah, I like that, that's good stuff. And I've just come off of a week driving my E39 M5 and you'd think that going from an M5 to a Civic would be a difficult task, not the case. In fact, when I got back in my Civic, sure, the clutch is a, butt, a lot lighter and it's less tactile than the BMW, but the seating position in this car is lower. It actually feels more sporty than the M5, which, you know, the M5 is a five series. It's certainly not designed to be, oh, I love, I love it when you wipe a big amount of water off a windshield. There are just simple satisfactions in life. That's good stuff. Um, and these wipers are excellent. I've already mentioned before that I really like how they've integrated the washer nozzles in the wiper itself. So when you do uh, pull that stock to wash the windshield, it's not coming off the hood. But enough about all these weird little things that I like. Let's go for a drive. We've got our headlights on. We are happy campers. The headlights in the SI are fantastic, but the headlights in that Integra were next level stuff. And I really appreciated that about the car. What a gentleman. What I'm wondering, only time you'll ever scramble for traction is these all seasons in the rain. <laughs> 200 horsepower going all the way right now. I'm wondering if the new Civic Type R is going to have the better headlights, the headlights from the Integra. So that'll be something. I haven't seen that in the press release, the press release for the Civic Type R that I'm very eager to get my hands on and hopefully own, you know, begrudgingly trade my SI for, but that's okay because if you're gonna trade an SI for something, it should be, ooh, look at this puddle. We don't wanna hydro lock the Honda like Eddie did on his eighth gen. If you're going through big puddles, guys, stay off throttle. <laughs> that wasn't necessarily big enough to matter, but especially in old Hondas where that intake goes way down in the wheel well, you don't want to pull water in. Water in cylinders, not good. Not a compressible fluid. I can feel a whole bunch of hydroplaning. Oh man. But luckily the car is still relatively stable and really easy to manage it. Uh, despite being low weight, you know, I was driving that M5 for the last week. That car weighs like 42 or 4,300 pounds. That's a big, that's a big car. Um, and maybe by today's standards, that's like a little more normal. But with 
essentially 90s technology because although the cars are 2001 the e39 came out in i want to say 96 or 97 something like that um, so it's a very 90s car lugging 4300 pounds around is a is a whole thing um and and in certain circumstances it feels more stable and like on the highway whereas this car still you know it wavers a little bit we're going to take it out on the highway in a minute anyway just to get some higher speeds in the wet see how she breaks in the wet not bad nice and controlled abs engaging great but like the abs in this car actually doesn't um, limit you too much some cars the abs kicks in way too early and I feel like this really was right on the edge of braking traction so that makes me feel good man look at this there's a lot of water out here in the comments let me know if you are you guys like a wipers and fastest position people I was always taught maybe it's just because we always had like crummy old cars growing up but my dad would never put the wipers on that fast because he said oh you're gonna break them and I'm like what is that a thing and, and it does stress me out. And I think maybe because he ingrained that in me as a kid, that I think that like, it's stressful to see your wipers go that fast. But I don't know, what, what, <laughs> am I the only one who doesn't like to put my wipers in the fastest setting? Or feels naughty when he does? I've gotta give Honda some credit for the amount of wheel spin this traction control allows for. I mean, that was actually quite entertaining to see that because a lot of times auto manufacturers will limit wheel spin to such a level that it basically cuts all the power. And I, you know, I just, I wasn't floored. I had my foot at half throttle, but it was, it was spinning up and it allowed me to really experience that and let the car catch up to the wheels, which I think is fantastic. That's especially in, in, in conditions like this, that's kind of what you want. Ever you feel like your car is not powerful enough, drive it in the rain, drive it in the snow. Low grip, every car has a thousand horsepower in the snow. Starts to feel pretty quick when it's wet. Yeah, that's the stuff. And we've got a car behind me that you may not even be able to see in the mirror because they have no headlights on. It just is insane to me that people go out in these conditions where you basically can't see anything um, and they don't they don't turn their headlights on. That's, that's really wild. I hope you're not one of those people. I hope if you're in a car with somebody and you recognize that their headlights aren't on, you inform them because it's your life on the line too as a passenger. This is nuts. Absolutely nuts. But that's the thing, you gotta watch out for this stuff, you know? It's really difficult to drive in these conditions already just because you have a low grip environment. And then you've gotta, you know, basically assume that there will be invisible cars on the road, which is very, very frustrating. Yeah, these are those kind of conditions too where, you know, when you walk outside and you see the rain, it looks clear, but all the rooster tails basically coming off of the car. You can't see much, and I've been tr I've been watching a lot of racing Instagram footage lately, and it's amazing to watch people just, like properly racing in the rain on racetracks, because when they're in the draft of someone else, you just can't see a thing. It's really impressive stuff. Maybe we need brighter tail lights on cars, because that's that's not very impressive on that Tesla right there. Still can't see much. The old German cars from the 90s with those blinding bright red rear fog lights, that's the stuff you want. The trickiest thing about driving in the rain like this too is when there's a lot of rain and there's kind of flooded roads, you can no longer really tell what's water and what's an actual pothole because the water fills up. Um, that's, how I, that's how I lost a wheel in an Acura NSX, but in the snow, 
where the road was all snow and uh, I didn't see the pothole because everything looked the same. So I ran over uh, a, a good little pothole in the road and it was enough to take out the wheel and tire of a new NSX. And same goes for the rain. You know, it just fills in all those gaps and everything just looks black. And you can't tell if what you're looking at is a tiny little puddle or if there's a wheel-sized hole below it. Left-lane hogs do not make life any easier in these conditions either. But, on the other hand, if he's hogging the left lane and I can just cruise here in the middle, I actually have better visibility. So, life is all right. Hang out over here. Thankful for my air conditioning. Because it's going to get a bit foggy in here. Not what I like. Not what I want. My 911 has no AC. So, if it gets foggy, it's just windows down, whether it's raining or not. you got to figure it out. That's not good. That's not good. I don't like that. Oh, we're going to die here. Please, nobody hit me. I'm going to tuck in way over here because I don't want to get rear-ended. And hopefully if someone comes around that corner real hot, they send it over the grass. Good stuff. Okay, we've survived. We've survived. Thank you for blocking the intersection. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> and you get that understeer when you get some wheel spin there. So you've always got to be managing that throttle. Oh, it's a good time. I think people don't appreciate driving front wheel drive cars enough. There is there's a lot to it. There's a cop. We'll be careful through him. Sliding like glass. <laughs> you can tell me how underpowered this car all you want, but and it was not in English. But you know what I'm saying. Get it out on some glassy conditions. Bounce it off the rev limiter. And see how it goes. All it takes is a little bit of water on a slippery cold road to make you feel like you're in a 1200 horsepower Supra. Suddenly the boost hits in your 1.5 liter and <laughs> you're fast and the furious. My favorite thing about driving in conditions like this is watching all the water come off of these trucks and cars and it gives you an idea because it's basically like a wind tunnel, right? So you're seeing instead of smoke, you're seeing the water show where there's like smooth air and what's what's working, what's not for aerodynamics. And it's great if you ever get a chance to be behind like a GT3 RS with a wing or something, you really get to see how Porsche or whoever has shaped the air around the car. And it's very cool to watch. Maybe the Jeep Wrangler is not the ideal condition for that. <laughs> Pretty much a brick. Oh no! Oh no, an Acura MDX with no lights on. See, I thought we were above this. I thought we didn't uh, I thought we didn't have these issues on these cars, but I suppose even an older MDX can still drive with no headlights on unless they just aren't using auto mode. How depressing. <laughs> Low power cars are a lot of fun, okay? Especially a front wheel drive car. Like, this brings me back. This makes me feel like I'm in high school again with my Mark III Volkswagen Golf just in a much nicer car. But I gotta say, I love driving. It doesn't matter what I'm driving. And, and that's the thing. I think a lot of people think that they, they, they're gonna hate driving if they drive something that isn't, like, perfect. That isn't, you know, the thing. I don't need to drive the thing. I'm, I'm pretty happy in a Honda Civic or a McLaren. Like, life is all right. Oh, we got a train. Let's go take a look and end the video over there. And I wish we had 
better public transportation in this country because I think it would get a lot of cars off the road and solve a lot of our emissions issues as well as traffic problems and just bad driving. I think a lot of people don't really want to drive. And, uh, you know, that's why we end up with cars like this. The most boring car in the world, the CBT Subaru Legacy. It's a difficult pill to swallow, that car. Great tech, 26 grand, lots of safety features, but my goodness, it is soul-sucking. And that's coming from me. If you can make driving boring to me, you've really done something special. So that's my Civic Si in the wet, having a little fun. And uh, I hope you guys drive safely out there, keep an eye on tire conditions, and maybe, I guess, don't cross active railroad tracks. I don't know, man. Be careful out there. Life's dangerous. Might as well drive something safe. <laughs> don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. It's always scary when ABS engages too early and you're like, whoa, 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 I, uh, I needed that. So good on you, Honda. This limited slip differential doing a lot of work for us, keeping us moving in a straight line and putting power down on both sides. Good stuff.